Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan. This is a very short, inshallah, 10 minute video going through about the COVID, va COVID vaccine consultation that the government is running due to finish this Friday. A lot of people in the Muslim community are very worried about it, not just the Muslim community, but beyond. And there are many messages flying around about it, asking people to submit information. So as the British Islamic Medical Association, we wanted to discuss this, myself, uh, Wajid, and Dr. Saman Waqar here, the pros and cons of the consultation, and what we as BIMA plan to submit, and we would recommend to the Muslim community as well. So what is this consultation about? Everyone knows we're in the middle of a pandemic, and in this pandemic, we're all waiting for a vaccine. We're waiting for a cure so that we can be um, able to get back to normal life. We can get back to normal business. And we don't have to be worried about COVID potentially infecting us or our loved ones and leading to serious problems, including Nozabillah death. So the vaccine is something that people have been waiting for to reopen the economy and, and to remove this fear from us. And the government is asking the British public that they plan to possibly do some fast tracking measures to help get that fax vaccine out as soon as possible. So in this consultation, they've given a few things which they've said that would help get that vaccine to the market as soon as possible. Should we or should we not do it? I'm going to talk to you about the, a few reasons just to be balanced, not that I necessarily agree with this viewpoint, but just to be balanced why someone would want to do that. That it's not simply a uh, a nefarious plot or something to, you know, just foist something on the public. So number one, there is a real human cost to COVID. For many of us, if you don't know anyone who has actually died from COVID, you don't know anyone who has suffered from COVID, then you might think that it, you know, there's not really much of a cost. It's all a big of a, a bit of a big deal out, out of nothing. But the reality is that at least we're coming up to a million deaths worldwide from this disease. And it's not over yet, Nozabillah. We're literally only going through the first wave and we may be about to start the second one. So there is a real potential that the, a COVID vaccine, if it comes quickly, could save lives. The other problem is that the effect of not having a COVID vaccine means that as a community, we have to go into lockdown. So when you go into lockdown, you have to be very careful who you meet. You have to be careful about sending your children to school. You have to be careful about the number of gatherings that you have. And all of this is having an impact on us. Not only is it having a social impact that we can't go where we want to and meet who we want to, the mosques can't be packed out, but it's having a mental impact too. It's seriously stressing us out. The levels of anxiety, depression are through the roof. So we have to be aware of this as well. COVID vaccine would help start getting over this trauma. And the last part is the economy. A lot of people think it's all about the money and a little bit of it is down to the money because COVID is destroying the economies of the world. It is having a huge impact. And when economies get destroyed, then jobs go. And when jobs go, who suffers? Not the rich. They only suffer a little. It's the, by and large, the poor and the middle class and they suffer hugely. And being poor is bad for your health. Being unemployed is bad for your health. So getting a COVID vaccine early could help the poorest, most vulnerable people in our society because it would help the economy bounce back as well. So that's, those are, the, in a nutshell, the reasons why we should be, why they might be trying to fast track it. But let's talk to Dr. Saman Wakar about what the problems are with fast tracking it. Yes, thank you for that. Um, it is um, obviously caused a lot of uh, debate, a lot of um, concern amongst you know not just the Muslim community, but you know most citizens in the UK are looking at this consultation and wondering, you know, what does this mean? Where do we go from here? Um, and just to finish off, just to sorry, pick up with your last point where you mentioned about uh, you know the poor will suffer. The way that this vaccine is being developed by, you know, AstraZeneca and other pharmaceutical companies um, across the world, not just in the UK, is such that the rich countries have actually bought the vaccine. So in the UK, you know, you've got five 
doses per person that the government has purchased and given uh, made a purchase order for, for the vaccine. Whereas in poorer countries, you've got one vaccine for every four or five people. So you've got a gross inequality uh, that, uh, that is already being created uh, on the back of this. So um, actually, uh, you know, that, that sort of uh, argument around uh, economically is only going to benefit economically developed nations. Um, and, and that is sort of the nature of, of, of any industry which is looking to maximize its profits and the pharmaceutical industry is no different from that. Um, I guess the other thing is that, you know, there's a big concern about uh, the immunity from civil liability that's being proposed in this legislation. Currently, if uh, you take a vaccine um, and you get a very rare reaction, which results in you successfully uh, getting um, a settlement, there is a amount of money that the NHS has set aside for those sorts of cases. Um, and part of that is because they have so much trust and so much belief in the fact that these vaccines work, that they're willing to put the money where their mouth is. What this uh, you know, clause is potentially going to do is going to undermine that trust completely to say that, look, if, if ac you know, accidents happen, we need to do this and under, the, under the guise of an emergency, under the guise of necessity, which may well be true, but you know, uh, what if it doesn't work? What if the vaccine actually has harms that short trials that, you know, we've only had this, uh, you know, these, uh, the trials that they've been doing on, this, on these vaccines have only been going on for weeks and months. Normally when you do uh, any some form of intervention, you have to test it very vigorously before it even gets to the stage of being introduced in humans. So they have animal trials first, they have like, uh, you know, theoretical concepts first before it even gets to animals. You're talking about years and billions of pounds before, you know, you get to that stage. We have bypassed a huge tranche of that on the uh, basis of necessity. So I don't know, no one is quite sure that when you give these vaccines to billions and millions of people, um, across the world, what's going to happen in six weeks' time, six months' time, six years' time as a result of taking that vaccine. And if there are any bad effects from it, then that's further going to you know, um, uh, make people um, uh, hesitant to take the routine vaccinations against flu, against um, you know, all the other uh, conditions that are out there, um, where we have very good evidence that these are effective and that these save lives. And the WHO has estimated that you know, millions of lives are saved every year as a result of being vaccinated against diphtheria, a very common illness that causes diarrheal disease and kills millions of, uh, has killed you know, lots of children uh, in, in, in poorer countries. Um, you know, there's also the concerns around uh, you know, who's going to do the testing of uh, its effectiveness and when are we gonna be happy that it is effective? Um, there's concerns around you know, precedent being set in law. Is this something that's going to become the norm for uh, any industry uh, wanting to bring a product to the market saying that you know, there's a national emergency so we need to do that? Um, and uh, you know, I think all of it put together doesn't necessarily present itself as a, uh, a strong case for us to be cutting these corners when safety is important, yes, we need to get the economy kick-started. Yes, we need to get people back to work. Yes, we need to sort of get on with our lives and, and, and have things back the way they were. But at what cost? Um, and I think this is the big question mark. And we don't have all the data in front of us. Six weeks from now, we might know a lot more. But I think as it stands at the moment, there's, there's too many questions. There's too much uncertainty. And there are too many, uh, you know, amber flags around this for us to be, you know, completely, uh, you know, okay with it going ahead as it is. Um, and there are obviously many other things, you know, we're not going, we're not talking about any particular issue in depth um, here because of, because of time. Uh, but um, I think that's, that's sort of the gist of, of, of some of the issues that we've, we've sort of talked about with experts and amongst community members uh, and um, patients as well uh, with, the, with this consultation. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you so much for that. So if I'm summarizing what you're saying, and look, let's be honest, you and I, you know, um, virology is not our field, but we've spoken to people who are in this field. We've spoken to people who have helped with vaccine development, who are uh, infectious diseases experts, uh, specialists in other areas as well. And we've got a lot of uh, their information. Unfortunately, because the time is so short, we weren't able to get everyone together in a meeting, but we just thought we should present this information. And am I right in, in saying that 
what you're telling us is that Bhima would be cautious, uh, would be advising caution to the gov in the government consultation? Yes, I think, you know, say, say, safety first. And, and, you know, you could, you could argue that the other way, actually. You could say that, actually, we need to get the vaccine out there because we want to keep people safe. But I think in this, in this instance, because there's so many unknowns, not just in terms of the vaccine itself, but also in terms of the implications around some of the other things we mentioned, uh, you know, the, the immunity from civil prosecution, we mentioned the long-term, you know, uh, clinical side effects, we mentioned that, in fact, probably what is going to be the most compelling issue, the breakdown in trust um, in future interventions. Um, you know, I think for, for these reasons, we do need to put the brakes on this a little bit. Um, and I think from, 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 a, from a community point of view, I think our communities would be a lot more comfortable if, uh, if this wasn't going ahead in the way that the government is proposing to go ahead, that we should look to make sure we have long-term, uh, reasonable long-term data that is reflective of the communities, making sure that different ethnicities and different social classes and, uh, and different you know, people have had the vaccine tested on them uh, before we look to make, give it the rubber stamp to say that it's okay to take. Um, in all of this, recognizing that people have the choice uh, if they want to, if they don't want to, um, to take the vaccine. There will be some people that will be very keen to take the vaccine in our community because they have got uh, either themselves a serious illness that is puts them at high risk of developing complications from COVID or they look after someone who's got uh, that condition. And so, so they might feel compelled to actually go the other way and, 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 and get themselves protected or at least as protected as they feel that they could be. But I think from a population level, um, I think we, we, we might be reminded to sort of say that, you know, we should be taking things a little bit more cautiously with a huge caveat to say that this is just a consultation. We haven't had a vaccine on the market yet. Uh, we have some suggestions what it might be, the Oxford AstraZeneca one. We will have to reevaluate this when that, when that actually uh, occurs, if it occurs. Because, you know, there's so many things that could happen between now and then that it might not work out recently. You know, there was a case where they paused uh, the trial because of an adverse uh, uh, event in, in one of the trial participants. So many things can happen. Um, another vaccine might come in from Brazil or from China or from India um, with, with different data. So um, I think it, it, what we're trying to do here is just to demonstrate the enormous complexity of this issue. It's not that straightforward. Um, and, you know, we're doing our best to try and, and, and navigate this space in a way that is recognizing the science, the limitations of the science, but also the public health aspect in terms of making sure that, uh, you know, we, we are protecting our communities, not just from COVID, but also from all the other elements as well, uh, from people having trust in the system and, and, and making sure that they uh, can engage with, uh, you know, the normal health providers without feeling like uh, their autonomy is taken, taken away from them. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you so much. So in summary, we are the well-wishers of the Muslim community. We're part of the Muslim community. We're part of the general community. And even we feel like the, what, the, what they're saying in the consultation may be a little hasty, and therefore we want them to not compromise on safety uh, to get something out quickly. Uh, we hope, inshallah, that they will listen. That's what we're going to be recommending. That's what we recommend anyone else who's going to be filling out to recommend. If you have any questions, as always, please get in touch with us at covid at britishima.org. JazakAllah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.